The first time I started to know about Leonard Bernstein, I think I was 19, and I saw a documentary about him visiting Japan and teaching a student at actually doing a rehearsal because they're doing a concert with the young people. And so I saw that less than a year before he passed away. And um, it was quite a big, big inspiration for me. And when I saw where he, what he was talking about to the students, and basically what he was talking about is uh, it's really hard to be a musician and you have to really dedicate uh, your whole time to be the best. And the, the difference between the mediocre and the best is night and day. At that time, I already started the, to do makeup and the character makeup especially. And so I wanted, I was thinking, you know, in some day, I want to do a film about him, you know, going through the whole life. And the finally, you know, came together with this movie. You know, I think I first became aware of Leonard Bernstein uh, at the young people's concerts that were always televised when we were kids. And he brought an appreciation and understanding of classical music. And of course, uh, as I watched movies, I appreciated West Side Story or On the Town. But uh, other than that, you know, once we took on this project, so much of his life and, and his accomplishments was a revelation to me. It's a very important, you know, like a, because it starts from a face and the hairstyle kind of uh, represent their age and the lifestyle and everything. It's like almost framing. Then Mark comes in and they finish the whole character. So it's very important, each of those elements. Basically, what will happen is uh, at first I do a scan and the life cast of Bradley and take a bunch of photographs. And then I gather up uh, lots of reference photographs. You know, like Lenny was documented really well. I could gather almost like over like 1,600 photographs easily. And I divided on the each ages. Then I start to sculpt each stages on a life cast with clay and create the face then remove those sculpture and uh, mold individual pieces, then cast the silicone pieces out of it and apply that to uh, Bradley's face and also design a wig and decide a hairstyle because uh, he had a distinctive hairstyle too. So that was a process. we take in a lot of the images and find a trend. We find that Felicia was a very smart, chic woman who was beautifully groomed. She had her hair done at Kenneth's. She had beautiful jewelry. She was the maestro's wife to the nth degree and, and had great taste. And, um, <clears throat> you know, you find that as a through line and then uh, change the silhouettes as the story goes along. So you tell the passage of time with the different silhouettes. As for Leonard, uh, yeah, yeah, we're looking at a ton of photographs. And, uh, you know, strangely enough, there's this mid-60s to late-70s where it's pretty much his turtleneck era. They were in style. We shoot out of order sometimes, and we establish things out of order. So I was like, hmm, what could we use here? Uh, this seems to be his turtleneck period, Let, and we haven't used it much, so let's do it. We would have to work together so that, you know, Bradley could put it on at a certain point and, and Kazu could finish his work, and we wouldn't disturb the hair and makeup after it was all beautifully done. You know, the great thing about Bradley was He's a director, writer, and a producer, and uh, he, he's the only one I can ask a question to and get the answer. So every morning, you know, what are you wearing today? You know, because sometimes it changes on last minute. As a makeup artist, it has to be comfortable for him because it's, uh, he's directing at the same time, too. And, uh, uh, you know, if it's actor, uh, he can be ready at the cool call time you know, the makeup wise, but he also has to set up the f whole filming and everything. And so our call time, you know, you, it was like earlier than normal, like a two or three hours. And because we had to ready before everybody comes in, 
And uh, we had a lot of conversation. You know, I always ask actor, are you comfortable with that? You know, do you want to change something? And so this is the first step I'm going to do. And uh, let me know if you feel some, you know, like uh, uncomfortable. And also at when we start filming, we will, fe you know, find out more, you know, because it's like a test makeup is only done in a day. And but it's not whole day filming. But as soon as we start to do a whole day filming, we start to find out what will break down. And because it's like a, you know, makeup is like a, almost like a making a cake, you know, like as soon as it's done, it looks great. But during the day, if something happens, it starts to de deteriorate. So we also have to find out what his habit, you know, how we, we, he behaves in every situation. <laughs> he really embraced Lenny, I think. And the it, it, am amazing thing was uh, after I finished makeup, because of cut down the time, we had uh, makeup and hair and the costume uh, trailer as one. So after he, he had the hair on, he went into the changing area and he put the costume on and when he comes out he already Lenny with a director's face on you know so that, that was amazing to see yeah yeah and oh no I'm always uh trying to make sure he's comfortable you know we shot during the summer mm -hmm. he had all the makeup appliances on and then a suit and a tie and he has someone on set to be with him from my department to make sure he's okay but he just existed like lenny while he was directing mm -hmm. you know you get hot you take off your jacket someone holds your jacket he would sweat through a shirt but that was real and it's how it would be and then he would pull himself together when he would have to go in front of camera but i think bradley wanted it to feel real and he at some point said i want to look like a wreck so there was a freedom there, and we understood that if things weren't perfect, well, that's very much like real life. Sometimes things aren't perfect, and it adds to the overall feeling. It was an incredibly emotional experience for me to be part of this film and think that it's just so beautifully done and moving. Um, the, so that was my impression the first time I saw it. I think the resonance of being shown here in New York in that space was a special for the family who'd spent so much time there as children and with their father. It's his home, you know, so um, I, I felt like a lot of more connection as, of audiences to the film. And, and that was great. And especially, you know, like a Lincoln Center, you know, like <laughs> that's where he you know, was walking. And uh, so that, that was great, I thought.